She looks, I don't know the year, maybe 1997. I gotta read the year, maybe read the emission sticker. So this is Mercury Cougar XR7 with a supercharged 3.8 in it. This is a 3.8 Essex motor. Look how wide it is, right? And the fact of the matter is, this is still like uh, what's the 60 degree block. Once you take off all this stuff, you take off the air cleaner and you take off the supercharger intake and the battery tray and the supercharger, the alternator, the compressor and uh, water pump pulley and the power steering pulley over there and then you got an idler arm and you got the air injection and you got this TFI with two ends on it and you have your throttle body right there real peculiar car this has to be earlier and earlier than the mid 90s earlier than 95 I would say because it's got a mass airflow sensor on it and it's got a map sensor which is a redundancy so this probably has to be like a 94 93 something like that I can't find this emission sticker to tell me there's a mission sticker right here but oh 1990 this is a 1990 okay that's why I would have a map sensor and a mass airflow 3.8 it is not the most reliable engine prone, known for busting head gaskets. I mean, they pretty much just copied the uh, the Buick 3.8. I know guys are going to say, oh, they didn't do that. They did do that. They copied, you know, the only difference between the two engines, if you really look at it, let me show you, I'm sure I'll show you right here. Let me show you the engine, right? If you look at the placement for the oil filter, that's the only difference between both of the engines. But they had developed this because they needed something that was young and wasn't as antique as the 240 and the 200 straight six for the 80s. Um, it's not a bad engine. It's just that if you replace those head gaskets, you shouldn't have a problem. But the way this one works, man, I mean, it's just... <coughs> excuse me. It just doesn't make sense. I would just drop a five liter in here. It's just more practical for me. Automatic ride. Get, oh, and this is uh, this is the end of the Fox body. So this is actually like an SN95. The last modification for the Fox body as a two door personal coupe. Um, these cars are peculiar, man, because you can get them to go very fast. And they have this low sleek feel to them, but they're prone to oversteer. I just don't get it. No matter what you do, this car is prone to oversteer. Good tires on it or not. So, you got to keep that in mind. I mean, if anything, you might want to put, if you're building one of these, there's a steering, there's a rack and pinion steering column for the Lincoln Continental that allows variable assist. So, you might want to put that one in here because there's a firm setting that'll make the steering real firm to prevent from oversteer. Yeah, so, okay. Let's, uh, let's start on the driver's side. I mean, these aren't bad. I mean, they are very comfortable cars. The medium shift car right here. It's just that there's not a lot of pizzazz to them. But if you want yourself a nice personal luxury coupe for almost no money, these, these. All right? It's got... Uh, Leather interior, pin cushion style seating surfaces. It probably has a JBL amplifier in here too because this uh, looks like a bolsters for the lumbar support and also for the seat bottom. Yeah, so this seat looks like something out of a something that they would use also in a Mark 7. Center console. You know, it's got uh, the Ford. Uh, yeah, see, look. That's a JBL Premium Stereo right there. So it's got an amplifier somewhere in the back, probably. You know, another thing about these cars is they have this raking windshield. You gotta be wary, because when I every time I get one of these, I'm always looking out the blue band. But uh, other than that, it's a real sleek car, man. It's just like a, you know, it's got the, uh, the Ford Auto Lock on there. Tinted windows, well that's that's a good look. That's a good look. Right, it's got the 15-inch Coopers on here. CS4 Touring. 
Got the alloy wheels, disc brakes in the rear, disc brakes in the front. Yeah, you know. Oh, look. Haven't seen this in a while. This is the uh, automatic seat belt. And it's got an uh, airbag in this one. It's 1990. No? No airbag? Oh, 1990. No airbag in 90. Oh, yeah. 91 was the first year for airbag. Okay, so. It's federal law, so. But, you know, look. Look at the cluster. Cluster goes to 120. They give you a uh, vac boost gauge for the supercharger. It's got the real, uh... It's got the Ford Super Coupe gauges in it, so that's uh, that's just legitimate. It's got some trophies in the back, looking sweet, looking sweet. Yeah, it's got the uh, that's the that's the contemporary uh, not the door skin, but the way that they molded the door with the switches on it for 1980 for the Thunderbirds. It's pretty much uniform. Yeah, that Cougar. You know the Cougar I like? I like the Cougars from uh, 1987. That Cougar. Let me slide behind you here. Okay. It's got the blacked out tail lamps right here. They shared these with the Mercury Tracer. You know, with that little design right there, you know. Really nice. Red, red, you know. Red is a real explosive color. So it's like a very expensive color. Look on the driver's side, look. It's got access to the glove box with this little vent panel right here. Yeah. Yeah. Center, center shift. See, it's got that ride control like I was telling you about on Lincoln Continental. here looks like a white pinstripe single pinstripe yeah this is uh i've never seen an xr I, mean, I can't say that my aunt worked in the factory that built the seat belts for this car so you know my aunt in detroit she worked in the factory look see we have uh got a connector right here for a ford scan tool right there Nineteen ninety XR seven SN ninety five. It's beautiful. Oh, no. oh,